Now there's very few things that we can't take advantage of in the waste stream. So we're always looking for new and better ways to do it. Uh, they don't understand really the ability of the mechanical equipment and the process approach that we take. I think we've answered that with the systems that we've built. The recovery numbers were so high, uh, people just could not understand that that was possible in the MSW environment. Um, we just simply invited people to come see for themselves. There's a, a shortage of resources in, in the world. Uh, products that uh, are embedded in the MSW stream are in demand. Well, in the MSW process, the first objective is to take materials to their highest value. We don't really look at anything in the waste stream as, quote, just something that we want to get rid of. Some of that is in the form of commodities. Some of it's in the form of organic waste and some of it is in the form of what I'll call the light, dry, high caloric value fraction that can be then uh, converted into a source of energy. Right now there's very few things that we can't take advantage of in the waste stream. Within MSW it's all there and all available, all easily collected. Well MSW processing has been very difficult. It has been uh, tried a number of different ways for decades and until recently, recovery rates were very low from the process. It was always a question as to whether the technology was capable of processing mixed materials, segregating those materials such that they still had value. And I think we've answered that with the systems that we've built. Well, we had an opportunity to build an MSW facility in San Jose, California. We brought together the knee hot separator, we brought together our polishing screen, brought in optical sorting, put this package together, you know, really a first of its kind in the industry. In the end, we really overshot our target and accomplished about a 75% recovery. The industry looked at this um, with uh, almost disbelief uh, because the, the recovery numbers were so high uh, people just could not understand that that was possible in the MSW environment. Um, we just simply invited people to come see for themselves. Uh, for somebody looking for an MSW system, uh, the thing that they're going to be concerned with is the overall performance of the system. We're bringing all of these very high value groups high competency, long experience in the industry together uh, to make sure that we're uh, hitting the needs of the customer. We can uh, guarantee that they're going to get the results that they want when they buy a system from us. Whether we integrate uh, all of this, all of the designs are a, a joint process with all of the players at the table, and that is unique. We're able to do that by making sure that we have all of these technologies under one roof. Key to controlling this process, breaking this process down, is the VHS debris roll screens. The debris roll screens are based on our patented tri-disc technology. The uh, triangular disc shape has been a very remarkable performer for us over the years. So we will have uh, screening technology set very close to the front end of the facility. One of the first functions we perform is getting out the small fraction as soon as possible. The small fraction typically being organics, grit, dirt, those kinds of things. And getting that isolated so we can handle it and process it separately and then it's not negatively impacting everything else downstream. Uh, this disc is very scalable and performs very well. The key to the design is, is that 
inherently agitates the material. It's a very significant asset in the screening process to increase tons per hour per square foot of screen deck. Makes our equipment sizes very competitive and gives us a very high performance for the size machine that we can put in. Secondly, now with the tri-disc and the overlapping configuration that we have, the discs are in line. So material can't drop down into the space between the disc and the opposing shaft. This also has now given us a screen that has a very accurate opening. Rather than a, a scalping screen, which has a nominal opening of two to four inches, depending on how the material falls into the screening space, the this screen creates a rectangular opening. Uh, it's the same opening throughout, it doesn't change, and now the disc screen has become a sizing device as opposed to just a general scalping device. We take the uh, advantages of the disc screen into the MSW process. Flat material, we call it 2D material, is being moved up the screen. Um, the 3D materials, typically containers, aluminum cans, those kinds of things, are rolling back down the screen. The next thing that our tri-disc does for us is, is it separates by impact. Uh, because of the tri-disc shape, it's actually like a lot of little hammers spinning around in there. And the hammers will strike, say, a flat PET bottle and will pop it up in the air and start it spinning. Once we get it popped up in the air and it's spinning, it takes on a 3D nature and can tumble back down the stream and go where we want it to go, as opposed to being captured in the fiber stream and be simply carried up the screen. And that's, uh, that's something that only the tri-disc is capable of doing. The adjustability of our screens comes into play. There's a high degree of flexibility in our control systems these days. You can uh, change the angles from the control panel, change the speeds from the control panel. So uh, we're making the screens as user-friendly as possible and as flexible as possible. So as the character of the material stream changes, say from season to season, uh, you can make adjustments on the fly and still maintain a uh, high level of efficiency. Uh, you can almost say that our polishing screen disc is non-wrapping. Uh, it's that far removed from what the other disc can do and the performance that you see. That has given us the ability to manage this high volume of film plastic that you find in an MSW stream. And without that capability, uh, this process becomes much more difficult, much more complex, and really much more expensive. The single drum separator brings some unique characteristics to the air separation process and enhances what we can do with municipal solid waste. Making this separation though between the higher value recyclables and the lower value organic materials and inert materials is critical and really very difficult and to do that well uh, you need a significant control over the airfoil properties of the material, how best to get the heavy material to really fall away, get the material that you want to recover to go into the light stream. It's just really be a tremendous machine for doing what we're doing, particularly in the MSW environment, which is a very rugged, demanding environment. We can have rocks, stones, bowling balls, you name it, coming at these machines. Now, they have proven to be very durable, very predictable, they sit there and do their job every day. They do it the same way every day. And it's been a very valuable asset in the separation of MSW. Uh, the optical sorting process that we have the uh, opportunity to provide it comes from NRT. Uh, they have um, a very distinct technology 
two things in particular that they do is provide individual uh, scanning channels. Uh, we're not trying to rely on a single sweeping uh, technology to look from one side of the belt to the next and try to see all the pro product that is on that belt. Even though, though those processes operate at high scanning rates, they can't compare to our ability to see what's coming down the belt based on our individual channel design. What we have developed with NRT is the ability to scan the material in flight. Look at the material as it leaves the belt. The thing that's also unique and makes it difficult to duplicate is the software and the algorithms that NRT has developed to make this scan eject function happen in milliseconds. The computer has to outthink and outrace that container as it's flying through the air at feet per second and within a few milliseconds give the fire command to eject that product and when we give the command to fire on that container and eject it the probability that we're going to get a good hit, we're going to get a good movement of that product to where we want it to go is very, very high. The ability to move thousands of objects per hour, uh, do it consistently, achieve high recoveries, achieve high purities is, uh, is more than you can do with people and a lot of people. You get tremendous product, tremendous efficiencies. And in this business, when you talk about the difference between a 97% uh, rate or a 98% rate, uh, those become big numbers. These machines move thousands of pieces per hour, thousands in the hour in a normal operating facility. And making a 1% difference in the recovery, making a 1% difference in the purity is something that you don't want to pass on. It's, it's important to target organics because it represents such a high percentage of, of the stream. So you can't uh, reasonably address the municipal waste stream without dealing with organics. We're talking about maximizing the benefit to the environment, maximizing the benefit economically, and it's important that you pick up this organic portion, that you don't just look at that and say, well, we'll, we'll just put that in the landfill. We truly did a world search and uh, found what we regarded as best-in-class technology in the way of anaerobic digestion. ZWE is able to bring this very highly advanced anaerobic digestion process to the marketplace. The dry anaerobic digestion process takes the material as we receive it from the MSW process, allows us to again extract methane, it can generate electricity or we can turn it into transportation fuel, fuel the uh, collection vehicles that are used to bring the waste in. As importantly, the solids that uh, are left uh, had to be then made into some viable product, some valuable product, which is compost. We take full advantage of the material that came to us. We have the capabilities to uh, design very small systems. Uh, we can take on very large facilities. One of the largest anaerobic digestion facilities in the world is in San Jose, California right now. That notion of making sure that we're looking at all ends of this and really closing the loop around uh, recovery uh, we think was very important. When you start talking about doing MSW recycling, you hear the same conversations now that you had when you started to introduce single stream recycling. Again, people are concerned about the contamination. They don't understand really the ability of the mechanical equipment and the process approach that we take to pull this material apart and salvage very high valuable commodities. Uh, the facility that we've just recently started up in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, the materials coming out of the facility are well accepted by the buyers. 
um, get comments from some of the buyers that perhaps the PET that they're seeing coming out of our Montgomery facility is better than they get out of many single stream facilities. We've had comments by one buyer that the fiber they see coming out of the Montgomery facility is better than some of the fiber they get from some single stream facilities. The purity rates are meeting all of the industry's expectations. Uh, we're able to make very, very high quality products uh, and really that's a function of the technology that we're deploying. Each community has its own model. So single stream has been deployed in a number of places. Uh, it works very well. Uh, there are places though that haven't fully deployed and are looking for some other options. So we're always looking for new and better ways to do it and uh, some of this is a, a product of our own evolution as a company and, and the evolution of the industry uh, where customers, cities, are demanding that you recover really all parts of the waste stream. The next phase for recycling will be to bring all the material in together and bring it into the same facility, still get the same high recovery of recyclable materials and affect really the lowest cost for pickup and transportation and the lowest processing costs. I believe that economics will win the battle over time. The MSW process ultimately will be the collection system of the future. All we can say to those who wonder whether or not you can pull recyclables out of MSW is come and see.